Good morning everyone. Welcome to the English class. In the previous class, we learned the story Two Travelers. Today, let's see the exercises from the chapter. All of you please take your English reader and turn to page number 78. And I hope you have already read the story once again. Now, the first set of exercise is reading comprehension. Question A. Write T for true and F for false. We can see six statements given there. Please go through all the six statements and you have to mention whether the given statement is true or false according to the story. Pause this video, finish this activity and come back. Hope you are done with that. Now, let's discuss the questions. Question 1. Hari Singh was a kind man. Is that true or false? Yes, he was a very kind and generous man. So, you can write T there. Hari Singh lived in a village in Madhya Pradesh. Is that true or false? It is false. Hari Singh lived in a village in Haryana. The old man from the E3 gave Hari Singh some play doh to make dolls. Is that true or false? It is false. The old man from the E3 gave Hari Singh to sugar dolls. Hari Singh fed trousers and took care of their needs. Is that true? Yes, it is true. Hari Singh's son wanted to eat the villagers. Is that true or false? No, it is false. Hari Singh's son Ramu wanted to eat the traveler dolls or the sugar dolls. Question 6. The travelers ran away after hearing what Ramu said. Is it true or false? Yes. They got scared and they tried to run away. So, it is true. Now, section B. Read these sentences and answer the questions that follow. Question 1. Sir, consider these your travelers today. Question A. Who said these words and to whom? The old man. An old man from a small A3 in the village said these words to Harry Singh. And question B. Why did he say these words to the listener? He said these words to the listener as the listener had been waiting at the A3 for a long time for some travelers to show up. Now, question C. How did the listener react to these words? The listener accepted the old man's suggestion and took the two dolls home. Now, question number two. Not now, let them eat first. Question A. Who said these words and to whom? Hari Singh said these words to his son Ramu. Question B. Who did the speaker mean by them? By them, Hari Singh meant the two travelers who had come to his home to take some rest. Question C. What happened after the speaker had said these words? After the speaker said these words, the two travelers who were about to have the food served by Hari Singh got scared and immediately fled Hari Singh's house. Now, the next section answer these questions. Question 1. Who was Hari Singh? Chaudhary Hari Singh was a generous man who lived in a village in Haryana. He ate his food early after feeding two travelers every day. Now, question 2. Why would travelers come to his house? The travelers would come to his house as his house was next to the main road. They came to look for water, food or shelter. Now, question 3. When would Hari Singh be happy? Hari Singh would be happy when the travelers ate to their heart's content. He would sit with them and watch them enjoy their meal. Now, question 4. What did the old man from the E tree give him and why? The old man from the E tree gave him two dolls made of sugar. He did this because Hari Singh had been waiting a long time at the E tree for some travelers to show up. The old man told him that he should consider the two dolls as his travelers that day and take them home, give them some food and then he too can eat. Question 5. What misunderstanding did Ramu cause? Ramu caused a lot of misunderstanding because he asked his father if he could eat the two travelers. He was referring to the two dolls made of sugar but the two men who came to Hari Singh's house thought that the boy was referring to them. They got scared and ran away. Now question 6. How was the misunderstanding cleared? 
The misunderstanding was clear when Hari Singh told the villagers and the two travellers the entire story about how the old man had given him the two dolls and how his son Ramu referred to them as travellers. Hope these questions and answers are clear to you. Now, the next section is about values and life skills. Random acts of kindness are deeds done for others without expecting anything in return. Discuss in class if you have done any random acts of kindness and how you felt after doing them. So kindness. Kindness is the quality of being friendly, considerate and generous to our fellow beings. So if you have had any incidents where you showed a random act of kindness to someone in need, you can describe or discuss about that, that incident here. You can make a note of the incident in your notebook, take a picture and send us through teams. Now the next section is the vocabulary and this is about suffixes. So let's see what is a suffix. A suffix is a letter or a group of letters which are added to the ending of a word to change its meaning or function. We can see some examples given in your textbook itself in page number 79. See the word beauty which is a noun. And to this noun, the suffix f-u-l is added to form the word beautiful, which is an adjective. In the second example, you can see the word rapid, which is an adjective. To that, the suffix i-t-y is added to form the noun rapidity. So, we can see more examples here. So, you can add a suffix to the ending of a word to change it from a noun to an adjective or an adjective to an adverb, noun to an adjective and so on. You can look at the examples given in your textbook. Now below that we can see the vocabulary section A. Read each pair of sentences and say whether the highlighted word is an adjective, adverb or noun. What has been done for you? Question 1. The box is full of colors. You can see the word colors highlighted there and it is a noun. Renu made a colorful painting. The word colorful which is formed by adding the suffix f-u-l to the word color. Here it is an adjective. So two examples are given there. Similarly you have to complete the other questions from the exercise. Please pause the video, finish this activity and come back. Hope you are done with that exercise. Now let's discuss the answers. The first one is already given there as an example. Question number two. There is a lot of danger if you play with fire. Danger is a noun. It is dangerous to play with snakes. Dangerous is adjective. 3. There was no seat in the crowded bus. Crowded is an adjective. There was a lot of crowd in the market. Crowd is a noun. Question 4. Nat's house was very comfortable. Comfortable is an adjective. Question B. Nat lived comfortably in his house. Comfortably is an adverb. Section B. Add suitable suffixes to these words to make new words. Then make sentences with any six words. So in this exercise, you have to add proper suffixes to the given words here. And then you have to use the new words to form sentences. This one you can do as an activity for the day. You can note down the words and the new words after adding suffixes in your notebook and then you have to write a sentence each for each of the new word. Let me give you some suggestions for the new words formed after adding suffixes. The first one accident, after adding a suffix you can write the word accidentally and you can form a sentence using the word accidentally. Cook, cooked, happy, happily or happiness, brother, brotherhood or brotherly, Divide, divided. Warm, warmly. Music, musically. Play, played. Sad, sadness or sadly. Love, lovely or loud. Tasty, tasted. Work, worked. So these are just some suggestions for you. You can add your own suffixes and form meaningful words and write sentences with them. So let's see the next section, the grammar and it's about the kinds of sentences. See, there are basically four different types of sentences. They are the declarative sentence, interrogative sentence, 
exclamatory sentence and imperative sentence. You can see some examples given in your textbook in page number 80. The first sentence, Chaudhary Hari Singh lived in a village. And this is a sentence which tells us something. So such a sentence or sentences that tell us something like it states a fact or about something or someone. Such sentences are known as declarative sentences and they always end with a full stop like in this case. Now the second one, sir, can we spend a few hours at your house? Here a question is being asked. So sentences that ask questions are called interrogative sentences and they always end with a question mark like you see in this case. And the third one, come back and you see an exclamation there, an exclamation mark. It is a sentence that shows a strong feeling. So sentences that show strong feelings or excitement are called exclamatory sentences and they end with an exclamation mark like this. The fourth one, please eat something. It's like making a request. So sentences that give orders or commands or make requests. Such sentences are known as imperative sentences and they end with a full stop or question mark. So with these in mind, let's complete the rest of the exercise. Section A, write the correct punctuation mark at the end of each sentence. Also write what kind of sentence these are. Question 1, what a beautiful sunset. So it's a sentence that shows a feeling, an emotion. So it has to end with an exclamation mark and it is an exclamatory sentence. So I just gave you an example. You have to complete the rest of the questions from the exercise as an activity now. Please pause the video, finish it and come back. Hope you are done with that. Now let's discuss the questions. The first one we have already discussed. What a beautiful sunset with an exclamation mark. It is an exclamatory sentence. Second one, do you want your lunch? A question mark there. And it is an interrogative sentence. Question 3. I am going to spend the day at my grandparents place. So it ends with a full stop and it's a declarative sentence. Alas, I have lost my way. So that ends with an exclamation mark and it's an exclamatory sentence. Now, my father makes delicious sandwiches. And that sentence ends with a full stop and it's a declarative sentence. Sit down said the teacher to the girls. It is a sentence that shows an order or it's a command. It ends with a full stop and it is an imperative sentence. Seventh one, you dance beautifully. Ends with a full stop and it is a declarative sentence. Question eight, do not move from this spot, said mother. So that is an order, it ends with a full stop and it is an imperative sentence. Hope you got all this correct. Now let's see the next section. Here it talks about the present continuous tense and the, the past continuous tense. So the present continuous tense is used to show an ongoing action that is happening right now or, or something that will happen in the near future. You have two examples given in the textbook. The two travelers are eating their meal. Are eating. The verb are eating, it is given in present continuous tense. Hari Singh is waiting for them. Is waiting is given in present continuous tense. These are actions, these are sentences that show some action which is happening at the moment. Now the next one, the past continuous tense, it is used to show an action that started in the past and is continued for some time. You can see two examples there. Ramu was eating the sugar dolls was eating it was happening in the past the travelers were running away something that happened in the past they were they were running they were doing it for some time and then stopped where running is the verb given in past continuous tense in this sentence and the next section read this conversation and fill in the blanks with the present continuous tense of the verb in the brackets you can see a conversation given there and some verbs are given in brackets you have to fill in this conversation using the present continuous form of the verbs given in bracket. Please do this as an activity. Please pause the video, finish it and come back. Hope you are done with that. Now let's discuss the questions. Raju says, hello, 
what are you doing here? Raghu says, I am traveling around Madurai. I am gathering information on local temples. Raja says, are you writing a book? Raghu replies, oh yes, where are you going? Raja says, I am going to Kerala to see the elephant festival. Hope you got all the answers correct. Now section C, read the account of Ravi's holiday in a wildlife national park. Fill in the blanks with past continuous tenses of the verbs in the brackets. So this one also you can do as an activity now. You have to fill in the blanks in the given account or the description using the past continuous form of the verbs given in brackets there. Please pause the video, finish the activity and come back. Hope you are done with that. Now let's discuss the answers. The teacher says, tell us about your trip to the Kasiranga National Park. So Ravi says, we were planning to go to Manas National Park. As it got cancelled, we decided to go to Kasiranga National Park. Kasiranga is home to the endangered one-horned rhino. We went on elephant bags for the safari. I saw a baby elephant and his mother munching on. I saw a baby elephant and his mother munching on bananas. When we were going to see the rhinos, deer, and water birds, I suddenly noticed that the baby elephant was following us. Hope you got all the answers correct. Now the next section here, there is a grammar lesson and it's about future continuous tense. And when do we use a future continuous tense to show the ongoing action in the future? We can see a couple of examples given here. Hari Singh will be standing by the road tomorrow morning. It's not happening right now, but it will be happening or it will be an ongoing action happening in the future. Will be standing is the verb given in future continuous tense here. The second one, someone will be coming to his house next Sunday. It's not today, but the next Sunday, something that is going to happen. So will be coming is the future continuous verb here. The general format for a sentence in future continuous tense is the subject plus will be plus the ing form of the verb plus the object. Now with this in mind, let's continue with the exercises. Section D. Complete the sentences with the future continuous forms of the verbs in the brackets. And you can see a set of A questions there. You can see verbs given in brackets. You have to fill up these sentences using the future continuous form of the verbs given in brackets. Please do this as an activity. Please pause the video, finish it and come back. Hope you are done with that. Now let's discuss the questions. Question number one. I will be playing cricket at 10 a.m. tomorrow. Question number two, mother will be watching television at 7 p.m. tonight. Father will be driving to work tomorrow. The baby will be sleeping around 10 p.m. Take your umbrella. It will be raining when you return. She will be coming with us. Question seven, he will be attending the classes. And eight, next week they will be throwing a party. Hope you got all the answers correct. The next is about pronunciation. For this exercise, you can use a dictionary with you and it's about the difference in the pronunciation of the letter W and V. The sound of W is W, whereas the sound of V is W. And you can see a set of words given there with both the letters. Use your dictionary and learn how to pronounce each of these words and get to know the difference in the sound of W and V. The next section is writing and it's about a diary entry. Imagine that you are one of the two travelers. Write a diary entry on the day you had gone to Hari Singh's house. So we have already discussed about writing diary entries in previous chapters. When you write a diary entry, first you write the date. And after that, you can describe all the happenings from morning to evening that happened on that day. This one you can do as a homework. You can write the diary entry imagining that you were one of the travelers who went to Hari Singh's house. And you can describe what all 
had happened at the home. And you can describe about all the things that happened at Hari Singh's home. So you write the diary entry in your notebook, take a picture and send this to teams. The next section is my word bank. Write the antonyms of these words. So antonyms means words or phrases which mean the opposite of the given word or phrase. Now we can see five questions there. Let's see the antonyms to these words. The first one, scared. The antonym of scared can be either brave or fearless. Then small, the opposite is big. Sweet, the opposite or the antonym can be sour or bitter. Four, stolen, the antonym is found. And fifth one, tired, the antonym is energetic. Hope you are clear with all this. So children, we have come to the end of the chapter, Two Travelers. I hope all the exercises and the story is clear to you. That's all for today. We will meet in the next class with a new chapter. Till then, bye.